I'm David Stacy, um, and uh, let's get me here. Uh, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been a sysadmin for 15 years before really diving into the uh, cloud and DevOps world. And at uh, some point in there, you know, I started with the M an MCSE in 98, like many of us do. And at some point, I learned Solaris and storage. And I like, I just, I guess I just like learning things. Um, I always said I'm uh, like an aggressive uh, generalist, you know, so aggressively not trying to dive into any particular specialty, and so far so good, uh, uh, because, because here I am still, you know, still learning, still learning new things. Um, but about, about uh, 2014, when I got really into DevOps, I uh, landed at Amazon uh, Professional Services, AWS Professional Services, and spent about six years trying to get everybody to go all in on cloud and specifically AWS, um, but uh, currently at uh, IBM. And uh, one of the reasons I'm at IBM is because most of my customers found themselves in a hybrid world. They would have Amazon, they would have Azure, they would have different things, and the difficulty of managing multiple cloud world, uh, clouds um, was real. You know, that was, I felt it, um, it was a real thing uh, that most of our customers had. And so I had some friends that went over to IBM. IBM did a very interesting thing in acquiring you know, Red Hat and putting everything on OpenShift. So our goal right now is to make IBM software extremely easy to deploy on any cloud and doing it. And that's the way we do that was with OpenShift. And uh, Dimitri, go ahead and yes. you can tell them a little um, bit about your story. I'm Dmitry Zhukovsky. As, as you see, I'm former Red Hatter. I used to be a technical account manager for, uh, responsible for a couple of uh, very important uh, Red Hat accounts like IKEA, Siemens, Ericsson. And actually some of the maybe product managers or even uh, engineers, they might remember uh, RC Nick Dimka poking them uh, day and night uh, for very complex uh, questions or problems. Uh, so it's, yeah, it uh, was really good at times. But uh, I did change to switch to IBM just before Red Hat acquisition. Uh, IBM took quite a while, but uh, they convinced me that I might be helpful at uh, Nordic and EMEA level to make a bridge between Red Hat and IBM and make it uh, like this, like merge more successful. Uh, and even, even more important, uh, to propagate the Red Hat culture within IBM. So count me as a Red Hat ambassador within uh, IBM. So, that's us. so let's uh, tell you a little bit about the situation Dimitri and I found ourselves in. And actually, I need a little, a little bit of background there. Um, we started just uh, you know, working in client engineering, trying to make IBM software go on OpenShift, and we tried to make OpenShift super easy to install. So we dived into IPI and UPI world. Uh, Dimitri is an expert on air gap and different things. Um, but with the last, last move, we're working for uh, within the IBM technology zone. And if, you, if you're familiar, if you're work, working within IBM, that's where you get um, demos, uh, infrastructure, uh, proofs of concept. Uh, it's where you test out things. It's where you learn. And you learn by doing real things with real infrastructure. So we need to be able to provide um, OpenShift to anyone and yes. OpenShift on any cloud environment. Um, so that's where the situation we find ourselves in. Uh, this is another slide, gives you a very kind of high level overview of the scope that we're looking at. Um, is anybody interactive? Has anybody been in a situation where your company, your IT department that you worked for merged with another company and you have to integrate an IT department? Show of hands. Anybody been in this situation? Yeah, a lot of hands went up. Now, IBM scale, we've been around for 100 years, um, IBM wise. and. Uh, we have done a lot of integrations, we've done a lot of acquisitions, and all of those things come with their own lab and demo environments. And so even though we've been around for a while and you think we'd be up on this stuff, we are constantly integrating new systems. So we have demos, POCs, code all over the place. Um, and we deploy them anywhere. So we're, we deploy them on storage, Power, Z, Azure, AWS environments, and we do this by deploying OpenShift anywhere. And what we deploy on OpenShift is IBM software, IBM cloud packs, and prototypes, MVPs, things like that. So let's get to the good stuff. And we do this, of course, um, so we can show off to our customers what we can do and what we can build on, on this environment. So current situation, 
just to kind of give you a sense of, of what's going on in the IBM technology zone, we have seen, <laughs> deep breath, catch, your breath, catch my breath, 75% year-over-year growth in the use of our platform. And a uh, sense of what, what we're doing, uh, 75,000 new server deployments, for, about 14,000 OpenShift uh, clusters uh, deployed every month. And I know it's a little bit of a unique environment because it's demos and POCs, so people are constantly cycling through these things. Uh, but we have learned, we have had to learn, and I am representing a large team of SREs and automation engineers who are, <laughs> right now, currently somebody's toiling away, making sure the platform stays up and is ready and uh, working on escalations, things like that. So I'm representing a large team here. Uh, we're doing 14,000 clusters a month, and uh, we, we span 51 global regions and, and data centers. Costs. Um, we live in a real world. <laughs> we have real budgets. My boss signs up for a real number of a budget that we're going to try to stick to. And as you can imagine, in the world that we're in, like these, these, the costs of our platforms can, can spin out of control really quickly. So we are on costs. You know, we need to ma manage those costs. Um, and, we've, and we've been able to do it by, you know, by moving stuff around. So one of the powers of OpenShift is we can start directing one places one to another. So if we sense and we see via observability and transparency that there's a cheaper cloud platform, we'll start moving OpenShift and start directing people that way. Uh, and we've been able to reduce some cloud spend, uh, $12 million of, of uh, cost uh, saved uh, on third-party cloud. Um, over last year. Um, innovation, you know, so innovation is a little bit of, we're a bit of a testing ground. Um, we need to stay up to speed on the software. And because we kind of like, the, you know, of course the main mission is to support our technical sellers and provide demo environments and, and labs and things like that. By accident and almost, you know, um, accidentally or, you know, serendipitously, I, I guess that was a word, we also happen to be running probably one of the largest hybrid cloud environments in the world, because just because of the nature of what we do. Um, so we show off that that the, what we do to our customers, and, and what we do and the way we do it is also a demo environment. You know, so you know you could spin up, you know, to your customer and say, "Hey, let's test out Rackham." Yeah. You know, and, and spin up a couple clusters and connect them together and show like a little Rackham instance. Or we can show our real Rackham instance to the customer and say, what do you want to see? And that's kind of what we're sh we'll show later. So that's one thing we do. Um, we are also 100% uh, cloud native. The systems that do the reservations are hosted on OpenShift and they are, you know, it's a microservice architecture. Uh, we are fully cloud agnostic and we're using, uh, this is new and newly announced, we are using uh, backstage.io uh, as, a, as a catalog of the patterns that we deploy on the clouds. Um, this is a, I grabbed a couple screenshots on Friday, uh, just a couple days ago. This is our Turbonomic dashboard. Um, real numbers here, uh, it's split, you know, you can kind of see what's, what's here and there, but um, the number, like the virtual machines is the number that we track closely. Uh, and that corresponds to nodes that support our clusters and currently about 18,000 nodes. Uh, supporting our clusters and we can kind of get some visibility about what's going on and if the nodes yep. are about to fall over, <laughs> we, we keep a close eye on that. Um, let's talk a little bit about, oh, we're doing good, uh, okay, we're getting close on time, so uh, I'm gonna talk through this very quickly. We have a reservation flow in architecture starting with the users. This is kind of a view of the microservice. The thing to point out here is when we get down to the actual provisioning jobs, that's where we put the automation. And this is controlled by a Terraform or uh, shell scripts. Yes. It's crowdsourced, so we actually have a lot of people that can contribute to the different provisioning jobs. And we pull that from a GitHub repo. Uh, it's all OpenShift based, so it containers. Uh, the containers are doing the actual work and they pull in this different code in a lot of different ways. So it's a, it's a bit of a glorious mess, but it works and uh, we're able to uh, have people contribute their own code, uh, whether it be a shell script, an Ansible, or Terraform, and then we deploy a cluster and the things on the cluster. And then what we're doing now is then using Rackham, Turbonomic, and Instana to monitor those yes. clusters. 
Um, a little bit more deep in the weeds, I think somebody said, I forget who, that he didn't want to show YAML up on the big screen. I guess I'm not that, uh, <laughs> not that smart um, or braver or something like that. But here's some YAML. Um, it gives you a little bit more deep in the weeds, but it may, may be a little bit more sense about what, what's actually happening under the covers. Uh, we get some user inputs from the reservation systems. Um, we carry that into the, re the actual reservation, which is a bit of a, uh, of a data object. Uh, we run a Terraform apply um, that kind of is, is a bit of our control, flu uh, control flow and uh, runtime loop that does different things. Uh, we module out the OpenShift yep. install, which actually just runs uh, the OpenShift installer. And uh, then when we get on cluster, so one of the things that we're doing is the cluster gets deployed, we install OpenShift pipelines on the cluster, and then we trigger a pipeline run. We define a pipeline that says, here's exactly what we want to have on this cluster, and then we trigger that pipeline run. So it may not be the actual standard use case for OpenShift pipelines, um, but it's a, it's a good bootstrapper for us. And that can get you to a GitOps situation, that can get you to you know, other run states, but it you know, configures the cluster. And so here's an example of um, a, a pipeline definition that would deploy Maximo. Um, IBM at Maximo on an OpenShift cluster. And because this is all codified, um, anytime somebody wants Maximo, they can click the reservation in IBM Tech Zone and we know what code runs and we control it and it can go on any cluster and uh, we collect our user inputs and there we go. So a little bit about why Red Hat and OpenShift cluster management. So yeah, so we got a, a video going now um, and this is a video that I captured on uh, Friday again, and this is what it would look like if you were a user to reserve, um, if you were going to show off to a customer what our Rackham instance would look like and kind of show how Rackham worked at scale, you'd go to the, the IBM technology zone, um, you'll create a reservation, uh, we have a little bit of inputs, this is how reservations work in general, uh, you can say I'm doing this for practice self-education, I'm running a demo. Uh, depends on what kind of reservation you're doing, but you can pick different regions. In this case, a Rackham instance is where it is, so you just get the one, uh, the one place to install it. And then it's going to start spinning up the reservation and give you access. And what it does at the end is it gives you access to our read-only access to our Rackham console, <laughs> of course. And in our Rackham console, this is, the, this is a real world uh, view of what our cloud environment, our clusters look like. At, at the time that I was installing this, I think there was about 614 clusters up and running, including on Azure, on AWS. We have a couple clusters on a IBM Power Systems and IBM Z. And we can take a closer look at um, you know, the health of our clusters. This is actually an interesting view because one of the things when, uh, when we started working at TechZone, we would ask you know, some of the SREs, like, how many clusters do we have running? And they would scratch their head, and they were like, I don't know, I think maybe a thousand, <laughs> you know, yeah. To, like, and, and so now, one of the things we put in over the year, and this is, I mean, it's, a, it's kind of a small and stupid use case, but just giving us visibility to, like, what's actually out there and where it is um, was, a big, was a big deal for us, uh, like, an, honestly, a big deal. Um, so we have that now, and that's, it's a small first step and there's a lot of places that we want to go, but we're actually there now, and we've gotten to a situation where every cluster we deploy is now agented in Rackham. Now, interestingly, and probably this is one of the questions we would get, so I'll answer right now, we are not deploying with the Rackham yet because of no. the, some of the, the places we need to deploy. We didn't have that, that feature yet. And uh, so we are actually deploying the cluster first and then putting the, the Rackham agent and tying it back that way. But in the future, we do want to deploy with Rackham because we do want to use suspended and some of the other features and have, just have that be there. Um, so this is showing you know, some of the, uh, I can dive into deep into some of the problems that we're seeing on some of our container pods. If they're erroring out, this is actually a uh, provisioning container pod. So that just showed you some of the jobs that didn't work. And, you know, the cluster didn't provision for some reason. So we have all the logs. We can dive into that and then see exactly what happened. Um, this is actually looking at some of the other actual cluster problems, like a cluster isn't checking in or it's unknown, so we can dive into that. And then Rackham is also showing us uh, some of the cluster issues that we might have. So some of the things we want to do, and just to kind of close up really quickly, because I think we're, we're close on time, um, 
is that we are looking forward to uh, using Rackham alongside with Ansible automation platform to, you know, we have all these clusters, we wanna make sure there's a baseline of set applications across all our clusters. That's the way we're thinking of Ansible right now. Uh, we wanna have more governance policies. That's something that we're a little bit behind the curve on, but we wanna, we wanna get governance uh, and compliance into and using that with Rackham. Um, and like in and, and probably many many other things as well so close it out right there um, as you can see there's the view of diff the different um, uh, you know we yeah we can sort out the different views that we can do um, and that's probably enough uh, enough for the video just based on time but thank you yes.